Hello friends. Thank you for joining me here on the Civil Engineering Study and Construction channel. I am Devesh Bhattacharya and today's video is all about understanding reinforcement steel ups and lateral type of RCC beam and column respectively. Friends, I will describe here in detail of the functioning of steel ups and lateral ties which includes reference to relevant IS codes and specific clauses ensuring you have reliable and accurate information at your fingerprints if you need more details you can always consult the mentioned code for deeper insights however if you have any specific topics or concepts in civil engineering that you would like to see covered in a video please feel free to share your suggestions in the comment box your feedback will help me to create content that best serves your needs so friends let's go to the main points in video you are watching the plinth beam is throughout bonded with the two legged stirrups so first of all what is stirrups in rcc beams stirrups which is also called shear reinforcement are critical for resisting shear forces and holding the longitudinal bars in place and provide additional strength to the beam they are usually made with steel and are shaped like closed loops of rectangular square or circular shape depending on the load and shear requirements now we are watching that lateral tie or rings are bonded with the column longitudinal reinforcement the specification spacing and design of steel ups are guided by indian standard code of practice for plain and reinforced concrete is 456 2000 in clause number 26.5.1.6 and 26.5.1.7 and table 5 in construction steel ups are critical for ensuring the strength and stability of rcc beams under various load condition steel ups in a beam serve the following key functions in the enforced concrete structure number 1 it resist diagonal shear and torsion steel ups resist shear force and prevent diagonal cracks caused by these forces they are particularly critical in areas near the supports of a beam where shear stress is maximum it holds main reinforcement in place steel ups ensures that the main longitudinal reinforcement bars remain in their correct position during construction and concrete pouring maintaining the beam structural integrity number 3 improve ductility and confinement steel ups improve the ductility of the beam and ensure that the concrete in the core remains confined which enhances the beam's capacity to absorb energy and deform without failure number 5 steel up help in controlling crack propagating under loads improving the overall durability and lifespan of the structure steel ups are typically spaced closer together in areas with high shear stress and further apart in regions with lower shear stress following design guidelines the indian standard specification is 456 2000 and sp16 guidelines for steel ups in reinforced cement concrete beam steel ups are placed perpendicular to the longitudinal bars at specified intervals along the length of the beam their spacing is determined based on structural design requirements such as the expected shear forces and bending moments as per clause number 26.5.1.5 of Indian Standard Code of Practice 456 2000 the maximum spacing of steel ups should not be more than this two number 1 0.75 into d and number 2 is 300 mm the lesser one is to be followed here d is the effective depth of the beam in clause number 26.5.1.6 of is 456 2000 has recommended the minimum shear reinforcement requirements it stated that even if shear demand is low minimum steel up reinforcement must be provided it should be asb greater than equal to 0.4 into b into s divided by 0.87 into fy where asb equal to cross sectional area of steel ups b equal to width of the beam section s equal to spacing of steel ups and fy equal to yield strength 
of steel up bars, generally 415 newton per millimeter square. The minimum diameter of steel ups should be 6 mm for mild steel and 8 mm for HYSD bar. The 135 degree hook in steel up is mandatory as per Indian Standard Code IS 2502 1963 in clause number 5.1.1 and IS 456 2000. And it's not just a rule, it serves critical structural purpose. The 135 degree bend followed by a 10D extension ensures the steer up does not slip or pull out under shear or torsion stresses. This anchorage grips the concrete much more effectively than a 90 degree bend. When a beam is loaded, shear forces tend to open up the steer ups. The 135 degree hooks resist this opening action better than a 90 degree hook, providing mechanical interlock and preventing early failure. In seismic zones, beams and columns undergo reversing stresses. 135 degree hooks help keep steel ups firmly engaged, avoiding unzipping of ties under shaking, thus improving ductility and confinement, which improves earthquake resistance. A minimum cover of 25 mm is recommended for steel ups to protect against corrosion and ensure durability. Now, friends, coming to the lateral tie. In RCC column, the rings or ties are horizontal reinforcement bars placed around the vertical reinforcement of the column. These rings play a crucial role in ensuring the structural integrity and performance of the column. It has many functions. Number one, the rings confine the concrete core, especially under compressive loads. This increases the strength and ductility of the column, allowing it to bear higher loads and deform without sudden failure. Number two, the vertical reinforcement bars can buckle under compressive forces, but rings provide lateral support keeping the vertical bars in place and preventing buckling. Number three, the rings resist shear forces within the column, which can occur due to lateral loads such as wind or earthquakes. They distribute the shear forces more effectively throughout the column. Number four, rings improve the column's ductility, making it more resilient during seismic events. This ensures that the column can withstand dynamic forces without collapsing suddenly. Number five, during the construction process, the rings holds the longitudinal bars in their designed position, ensuring proper alignment and structural integrity. The spacing of the rings depend on the factors such as column size, load bearing requirements, and seismic design consideration. In earthquake prone areas, closer spacing is typically required near the end of the column which is potential plastic hinge zones. IS 456-2000 has stated that the spacing of lateral ties should not exceed the least of the following. Number 1 16 times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal bars, number 2 the least lateral dimension of the column and number 3 300 mm. The diameter of the ties should be at least one fourth of the diameter of the largest longitudinal bar but not less than 6 mm. Now coming to arrangement of ties. Ties should be distributed evenly along the column height and must maintain the required spacing to provide lateral support to the longitudinal bars and prevent buckling. The tie reinforcement must provide adequate confinement to improve ductility during earthquakes. As per IS 2502-1963, ties should be tightly anchored typically by overlapping ends or hooks bent at a 135 degree angle with a minimum extension of 24 times the bar diameter. 135 degree hooks keep longitudinal bars tightly held, improving confinement of concrete and preventing spelling under compression. This ensures proper grip and prevent slippage. As per IS 13920-2016, in seismic zones 3, 4 and 5, the spacing of ties should be reduced to not more than 100 mm near the ends of the columns, that is in confined zone. So friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it useful. If so, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon so you never miss an update from this channel. I have got lots more exciting and informative videos coming your way. Meeting you very soon with such type of informative and interesting video. 
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो मीट यू अगेन थैंक्स